Hello and good morning. Welcome back to DevOps Days Amsterdam Online. I'm here with my good friend Tiago. And we're going to talk about something a little different. I mean, DevOps is all about tools and technology, right? Yep. Um, maybe it is, maybe it isn't. But your point is, maybe there's something more. So your talk is about kindness, if I'm remembering correctly, right? Yep. So talk to me a little about this talk and, and why you chose to give it, why you submitted it, and kind of what, what's the deal with this talk? Well, for the last 12 years and when everything kind of uh, started, we've been talking about culture and automation and lean and like the words of the comms, right. as we like to say. And I do think that in the last years, we kind of lost a little bit of the culture part and focused too much on the platform side and the automation side and in the Kubernetes. So I thought, well, what can we relate back to the acts of making the work a better place? How to make people happier? And what is the actual point of long-term happiness and people stay in. And I thought that kindness would be a good starting point because that's something that I fundamentally believe we should do at work at all time. So I started to figure out a way to add kindness to it and I switched to Combs with a K to put the kindness there. It's uh, not Kubernetes. Sorry, no, it's not Kubernetes. I was, I was so hopeful. I was so hopeful. <laughs> <laughs> really not. Uh, but I think you have a point, right, where you know, in, in corporations, in, in large enterprises, the human aspect of it is often a little lost. So much is about performance and, you know, delivering and speed. and But it's not always, at least in my opinion, about the human factor of it. Like you say, the kindness, but the, you know, psychological safety to be able to actually excel. Because you need to have that safety to be able to actually deliver, to actually you know, bring up issues that otherwise you wouldn't be able to because you're afraid to lose your job or get negative feedback or whatever. So I think, you know, I think that's, that you're right. I think adding kindness is definitely that something that we should be mindful of. Uh, so talk to me about the talk. What's, what's kind of the, the biggest point there? The biggest point there is that the word culture that mm -hmm. we had before is a little bit too broad and too many definitions of people and how they can take on it. Yeah. While taking the word kindness, you always have that pay it forward, an act of kindness is a little bit more actionable. Yeah. And that's something that I think is important. So I'm going to give a few tips on it and uh, how you can improve kindness and make sure that people are more aware. Mm -hmm. Because I truly, truly believe that 99% of the people want to be and act more kindness with their peers, with their customers, with everyone around. Uh, and to give a hint, I'm going to use a lot of uh, Ted Lasso on my uh, talk. <laughs> of course. So <laughs> how could see. you not? How could you not? I was even thinking of coming with the with the moustache, but then I think my partner wouldn't enjoy that. So I'll I'll be coach. No, I'll be coach. <laughs> I'll just have the big sunglasses. Perfect. Let's do Perfect. That. Let's Perfect. Do that. So, but yeah, I, I mean, I, I think kindness is definitely part of um, the, the thing that we should all be mindful for. Um, and you, sa you said something interesting, right? To, to make it more actionable. Um, so one of the realizations I had a couple of years ago was, yes, it's about being emphatic to other people to be nice to, you know, consider their feelings. But it, it's not always useful to have that, right? Um, and so my realization was, okay, we don't necessarily need to be emphatic, but we need to have compassion. And compassion is, is the extra mile that you do, you know, the, the thing that you do that helps them negate that situation, right? To actually help the other person solve their problem, at least take a step in the right direction. And I think making it actionable is, is you know, it's a good point that you make because that will actually improve the situation. Um, so back, back when I worked at a, a large outsourcing company here in the Netherlands, we had a rule for our classrooms. We did a lot of uh, trainings always leave the classroom a little bit cleaner and neater than that you came in. Um, and this is maybe kind of what you're going for. Yeah, and that and in the communication part is something that I find is extremely important. So something that I do for years is whenever I start working with new people, I have a one pager that I call Tiago's uh, quirks. Right. That I share with them. Yeah. Things that really I like to communicate. How do I like to communicate? Things that I enjoy, do not, do not expect me to do this, do this, do that. And just setting that user manual almost about mm -hmm. how I work and how I like to work and about my shortcomings. Mm -hmm. I like to, pay, I, I like to pay, make people a lot more aware about how do I do things yeah. and what are the things that uh, matter. And I think that that communication is already a 
starting point. Yeah. And then having regular uh, forums within the team with uh, customers where you promote like, hey, this is not something that I want to gather information against you. No, we are working towards something together. Yeah. And that is trying to achieve something that you already mentioned, that is psychological safety. Yeah. We need to make sure that people can communicate about their fears, their uh, ambitions, their desires, and when they're happy and when they're not happy with the team around them because we are there to help. And those little acts, those little twerks are the things that I think we should always try to do. No. I, yeah, I think that's valuable. I think, I, I think you're right on the money there. Um, but what often happens is, you know, in a good state of a team, this is all fairly easy. And I say fairly easy maybe between quotes because it's never easy. It is something that you actively need to work on. But, you know, when things go wrong, if your service is not performing as well, if the team pressure is too high, if the cognitive load is too high, like those are the situations where this becomes very hard. So do you have any tips or recommendations on how to deal with, uh, how to be kind in these kinds of situations? Yeah, I think that's a very, very, very important part because there was a phrase that a friend of mine shared a few years ago that's like, Tiago, I don't care how my team communicates in a sunny day. I want to see you when it's a storm. Yeah. And that's something that really took my attention because I realized like, yeah, you just came from this season of investments and startups and doing all of that and now a lot of people are going for their first economical uh, crisis and a lot of things are happening around that people are getting a little bit stressed and you start to see non-kindness acts happen more and more often because people are under pressure and what i like to share with people is like if you are thinking of doing something or if you are going through a phase where the communication is not going the way that you want it, circle back on it and think about it. What if I don't do anything now? What will be the consequence? And the majority of the time is the world's still spinning, things are still going, all of it. So even though we are important and we are the heroes in our stories, in the overall idea of things, mm -hmm. we shouldn't care that much about that overall impact of our stuff. We should just try to be happy, try to be kind, communicate with other people in the most open way and be clear about the intentions. Right. Impact, we cannot control. No. Oh. So be clear about the intentions that you are doing things, communicate. And when you make a mistake or when you look back, feel like, oh, I should have said that in that way, all of it. It adds a lot of value to go back to that person and say, hey, I did this now reflecting on it. It was not the right way. Right. I'm not happy with it. There is no shame in going there and say it. You are not in a problem to appear vulnerable and mm -hmm. to admit your mistakes, even if they are your direct or if they are your uh, manager. Mm -hmm. Being vulnerable is one important aspect of kindness that yeah. I think people are missing. Yeah, yeah, and I think that's true. Um, but you, you said an interesting thing where um, you, you cannot control everything, right? And so the, the circle of influence, the circle of control is, is an important concept for people to understand it. Like, this, this is what I can control. This is what I have influence over. And there's things beyond that that impact me and my work and my team and, and what I do for, for a living. But again, I don't have control over it. So within that bubble where you do have the influence, be kind, you know, take uh, priority that you are kind to others, that you help others. But outside of that circle, it's out of your control. So it's just... I mean, I don't want to go sing a Frozen song here, but let it go. Yeah. Right? And again, be positive, be empathetic, yeah. be caring, be vulnerable. If you do all of this, you're probably going to be happier. Yeah. And the people around you are going to be happier. And even when you see mistakes happening or other companies and all the stuff doing things that you think like, oh my God, how did they reach out that level? How bad that is? You just have to circle back like, no. 99.999, how many nines do you want to call it, percentage of the cases, mm -hmm. people are doing the best with the knowledge that they have yeah. and the information that they have at that time. And having that in, on the back of your mind at all times, that nobody is screwing up, mm -hmm. nobody's doing anything wrong on purpose, yeah. is going to help you achieve a point that it is not blaming, not pointing fingers, 
is about going in there and like, okay, we reached this position that's not the optimum one we wanted to have. Let's forget about the past in the sense that we need to learn from it, but what are the next steps? And I think that that is the kindest thing that you can do, especially when you are a consultant, when you're joining a company, when you're doing something else, that it is like, how does this architecture reach this point? How did this team reach this point? Mm. How did this failure happen? Well, it happened because things break, exactly. because communication is never perfect. And that's the overall essence of how to be kind. Nice. Yeah, I like the, the theme of we're all in this together and better, better that we work on how we work to that, together and how we treat each other. And then all of the rest and all of the output and the results and the outcomes will kind of follow automatically if the team is in the right place. Yeah. So I, I think that's a, a very high note to end this interview on. Uh, I'll be uh, sure to uh, watch your talk back because uh, it's instilled some inspiration in me. So I appreciate you opening up. I appreciate you talking about this here and talking about this topic on stage. I think it's very important. So from you know DevOps days and the whole crew, thank you so much for taking the effort, effort and time. Um, thank you. And with that, we'll uh, we'll wrap up here and we'll uh, we'll see you in uh, in the next interview.